hi and welcome back. This is part two of the basics of hand dyed yarn. In part two, I will be talking about dye, acid, and heat. And for convenience, I'm going to be separating each topic in its own video. So in part one, I talked about the fibers, the yarn that I use for dyeing. So specifically protein fibers. So again, protein fibers are anything that comes from an animal. So wool, alpaca, mohair, silk, those are all examples of protein fibers. So that's predominantly what I dye. And in order to dye those fibers, you need a specific type of dye. So the dye is called acid dyes. And it's called acid dye because it uses acid as the mordant or as the fixer for the dye. So the acid combined with heat is what will stick the color to protein fibers. So the company I use is called Dharma and they have a fantastic range of colors to choose from and it's really easily accessible so that's why I like using so that's why Dharma is my choice of, uh, of dye color. So let me just show you an example. So this is how I get it. It comes in these little jars and it's in powder form. So you can either work with the, with the dye in powder form or you can dissolve it in water and make a dye stock. So behind me you see examples of that. I've just dissolved the powder in water and then this is what you would call a dye stock. So a lot of my colors I will just use dye stock and other colors I will just use the powder dry straight out of the jar. And then other times I will combine the two. I will maybe dye a, a solid base or use the liquid form in some way and then sprinkle powder on top. So you can really get a, a, a lot of amazing, interesting results by just changing up your technique and the way that you use the dye. So it's really flexible that way. Now, one thing to keep in mind when working with acid powder or the acid dye is that it is in powder form. So those little particles are very fine, they get airborne, and it's not a good idea to breathe that in. So you should wear a respirator when working with the dye powder when it's in powder form. So when I'm mixing my dyes, I always make sure I have a respirator or mask on. If I'm doing any kind of method where I'm sprinkling the, um, the powder on, this, on the yarn, I make sure that I wear a mask. However, when it's in this form, it's not going to be airborne, it's in liquid form, it's quite safe to use. Um, you don't need to worry about wearing a mask once it's, once it's in liquid form. And the other nice thing is, uh, you, can, you can store the dye once you've um, put it in water, as long as, it, as it's in a, um, an airtight container, it can, it can last quite a long time. So it won't go bad, it will still be usable, so that's really convenient. Let me just show you briefly how I make a dye stock and the ratio of dye to water that I like to use and I'll, and I'll explain to you why I do that as well. Of course when working with the loose dye remember to put your mask on. So I have a very simple ratio for the for my dye mix. I use a two to one ratio so two parts water one part dye. So here you see I've got four cups of water so I'm going to use 
two teaspoons of dye. And that's how I mix all of my dye. If I have two cups of water, then I'll add one teaspoon of dye. So very simple. And I find that that ratio gives me a nice concentration of dye that I can either increase or water down depending on the effect that I want. I use very hot water to mix the dye. I find that the dye will dissolve better when you use hot water. So I just turn the tap water as high as hot as it will go and I find that to be sufficient. And you saw me there, I was rinsing out not just the uh, measuring cup that I was using to mix the dye, but I also rinsed out the measuring spoon and the whisk as well. Because we don't want any cross contamination, we don't want to add one color to another jar of dye because that will, well, that wouldn't be good for obvious reasons. So I make sure to clean and rinse out the utensils before mixing a different color. And give it a good whisk, make sure that everything's dissolved, and then pour it into uh, your container of choice. Here's a little bit of a bonus section. Since we're talking about dye, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about color. So there is so much information and so much to know about the science of color. It can be a very complicated topic, but I'm gonna keep it super, super basic. So you can see me here. What I've done is I've just shown the primary colors based on the uh, color wheel. Yellow, red, and blue. And on the right hand side, you can see when I mix those colors, how you get three other ones. So when I mix yellow and red, you get orange. Red and blue makes purple. Yellow and blue makes green. As promised, I kept it very simple, very basic, and this will give you a good foundation to, a good foundation on your journey to um, learning more about color. So do your research because this is a topic that's fascinating and as an artist, as a fiber artist, and I'm assuming that's what you would like to be if you're watching these videos, you're not going to stop learning. There's so much more to learn about color and you're going to find out what you like, your style of color, your style of application. And from this uh, foundation, you're going to build on it and it's going to be such a fascinating topic. So I wanted to just show this simple color theory in action. So you can see here, I am starting with one of the primary colors and that's red. And next I'm adding yellow. So if you remember what we discussed, red and yellow, it makes orange. So already we're starting to build some more layers of color and interest to this yarn. And now watch what happens as the blue is added. Where it's touching the red, we're gonna get some purple tones. Where it touches the yellow, we're gonna get green. So you can see here, just by simply using three colors, look at this complex color that we've created here. And in some areas it's going to be darker, in, other, in others it's going to be lighter. So, really beautiful.